Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to migrate or defederate a GoDaddy tenant into a regular Microsoft 365 tenant, where you can purchase licensing from a CSP provider or direct from Microsoft. Before I get into the video though, if you do want to see content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space, be sure to subscribe. Getting into it here though, I wanted to make this video because there's a lot of pain surrounding this type of move. When you get a customer who's on GoDaddy's 365 offering, they're able to purchase the same licensing direct with GoDaddy and GoDaddy federates their domain and the tenant and puts this front end to the management capabilities, which makes it extremely hard for you to move it under the CSP program traditionally. A lot of those pain points involve you calling GoDaddy talk to them for hours because most of their team doesn't know what defederation is and how to move that. And on top of that, you have to wait for them to defederate once you get them on the line. And this involves you migrating all of the user data to a new tenant and then having to be put on hold till they defederate. And on top of that, when they do defederate, they run this script which deletes all of the users in the tenant and releases your domain but it puts you in this limbo state without a lot of control, which I didn't like at all either. So what I did personally is I spun up my own syndicate tenants and I ran some scenarios in there to basically solve for the solution. And there's, there's two basic premises here and solutions that you could go with. One of which is to defederate the domain in the existing tenant and keep that tenant. So you're just basically stripping GoDaddy and replacing the licensing with a CSP provider or direct. And some of the benefits there, you never have to call GoDaddy. There's not a migration that you have to do, and there's no downtime or end user mailbox deletion. So that's the recommended step, I would say, is what I'm going to be proposing in this tutorial. The other one here that you can do is defederate the domain and move it into a new tenant. So still migrate, but again, major benefit here is never having to call GoDaddy. You uh, have some considerations here for actually doing this, which I'll be getting into here one of which is creating new SharePoint URLs, which I'll touch on next, and second of which is license activation issues. So typically if you use a third party like BitTitan or Skykick, they have an agent that you can run that reconfigures Outlook profiles, so you're less likely to run into things like that. But in my testing, it wasn't really a big deal. The users were simply prompted to put in the new password. So I'll get into all that here as part of it, and I'll be showing a demo of actually how to defederate here as well too. So the SharePoint consideration, GoDaddy spins up this tenant with this uh, pre-generated domain .microsoft.com, and so that is the default uh, SharePoint URL. And if you have a customer that really wants this to be their primary domain instead of this uh, custom configuration here, you would have to migrate outside the tenant in order for that to work. So just keep that in mind. The basic premise is you want to do a deep discovery with your client and make sure that you check off these boxes in what they want to do and considering the two solutions on moving forward. The big thing here with uh, defederating without migrating is first and foremost, you want to prepare your end users. You will have to reset their passwords as part of the defederation process. So you either want to collect that from them prematurely or set all that for them and, and set it to a temporary password so they can log back in after you defederate and basically set up a new password here. They will, again, be prompted in Outlook, as you see in the screenshot here, to re-enter their new password if it's looking to look for that license key and things like that. And in their Office apps, they may have to re-authenticate as well with the new password for license key activation issues when you shift the licensing from one provider to another, as in GoDaddy to another CSP. But there is no downtime with this solution if you do this correctly in the steps I outline here. So there's not a window of time you have to tell them that there's going to be no email flow or anything like that. So the steps here, which I'll be showcasing today, um, really the B, C, D all involved using PowerShell to basically remove the federation. And once you do so, you need to make sure you reset your passwords correctly after that or else they won't be able to log in. You'll add a CSP provider as a delegated admin in the relationship section, or you'll provision licenses direct from Microsoft. If you're purchasing the same licensing into the account, 
you won't have to do anything as far as assigning or unassigning licensing. But if you're moving, let's say, from business standard to business premium, you would have to bulk assign and unassign the licensing coming from GoDaddy. The next step, though, is huge. Um, you need to go into the partner relationship section, and I'll show this, and remove all of GoDaddy's rights as admin, delegated admin in the account. If you do not do this step, they will go in and run a script that deletes all the users and the domain from the account. It is a recoverable process, but it significantly increases the amount of time that it will take you to get this done. And you will have downtime because the end users will be deleted temporarily. So I highly recommend that you don't overlook this step. It's imperative that you do remove the GoDaddy partnership from delegated admin and you also make sure that any admin accounts that they've created, you've reset the password on or deleted altogether and make sure you just have a, a separate admin account that you've created in the account. Lastly, from there, you can cancel the GoDaddy subscription. It will just expire whenever the subscription time period has ended and the licensing will then shift to the CSP and there's no downtime and you're up and running without having to do a migration. If you do want to migrate a new solution to here, you perform a lot of the similar steps here for using PowerShell to defederate. Um, some of the considerations for doing this again is the SharePoint URLs, but also if you want to have like complete safeguards in GoDaddy not defed or refederating the account and running scripts to delete all the users, you might just want to migrate outside. This takes significantly more time than the defederating without migration, obviously, but it is possible to, to get done. So you would provision a net new tenant with a CSP or direct with Microsoft. You prepare the destination environment in that you would set up all the users with the .microsoft.com domain, and you would purchase a tool like BitTitan or Skykick um, and configure that tool for setting up a pre-stage migration where they can move all of the mail um, as copies into the destination and really I have all this in a in a guide that explains this in depth I'm not going to spend the video kind of going through that process so check out the bottom of this video and you'll get that guide and you can leverage that as well um, you'll prepare your end users prepare them for downtime in a cutover window you'll do that data migration with uh, BitTitan or Skykick do all the same steps with PowerShell and then you'll typically use PowerShell to update all the usernames in the source environment is then in GoDaddy's environment to a dot on Microsoft.com domain. And then you could delete the users if you wanted to. I recommend you keep them just in case there isn't pieces of data that you missed uh, before you do so. You can then strip the domain from the source environment, add it to the destination and update all the users. This window of downtime can be limited to about five to 10 minutes, but I would allocate about 30 minutes to an hour just to be on the safe side and give yourself some cushion while you have things propagating like stripping the domain and uh, recreating it in the destination. You can then test mail flow and cancel the subscription with GoDaddy. There's no other uh, DNS changes that you need to make because this is the same MX record that you have today. So with all that, I'm going to go ahead now and just pop into a syndicate tenant and walk through the defederation with you. Okay, so I'm here within the admin center of a syndicate tenant, and so far the look and feel is the same. Um, but if you click into the admin tab here, you'll notice that you get redirected into GoDaddy site. And for those of you that have customer accounts here, this is something that you're very familiar with. I just wanted to showcase it here for people that are not aware of what this actually looks like. So essentially what you need to do in order to become an admin to get access to this tab is to go to portal.azure.com and you'll have the same credentials here as the admin user you got set up with in GoDaddy. And you'll notice if you go under custom domains and you've already set this up, this is in a federated state for your particular domain that's been added in this account and this may be something you just acquired through the customer as well too and then you'll have your defaulted dot on microsoft.com that GoDaddy set up whenever they set up this tenant in the original creation so because the domain is hosted there they've got all the DNS settings hosted as well too so if you were to go into that section here as far as the 
domain settings, I'll just show you that real quick. Here I've got the t-365.info, but you'll notice the MX record and all of that is the same that you would normally see within a particular tenant. So this is why it's kind of complicated and you need to perform these steps to defederate this uh, from GoDaddy in order to clean up the tenant one, or like I mentioned earlier, you could perform a migration to a separate tenant. So here in the portal, what we're going to do is go to under users. And you'll notice here there's two users, the one you set up with when you originally set up the account. Um, and obviously you'll have your users that have email addresses in here from the customer. But there's going to be one, and it's particularly labeled admin at, and then the default.onmicrosoft.com domain. You'll want to click into that one here. And from here, you'll want to go ahead and just reset their password. And you'll click reset password here. And you'll grab this temporary password as well. And then what I would recommend doing is just simply opening a new incognito window to avoid any caching issues with the existing account you're logged in with here today. Okay, so I have an incognito window here. I'm going to go ahead and sign in and just simply use the credentials there with this admin account to set a new password. So the next thing you want to do here is open up PowerShell's administrator so we can set impersonation across all the accounts. So let me just open it here. And I'll just right click and run as administrator. And then here you're just going to paste in the script using the uh, admin name that you've taken as far as whatever's in your customer's tenant. And I'll have this script available for you so you can just copy it and paste it versus having to read this and write it all out. I'll go ahead and enter and it'll ask you to put in these credentials here for the particular admin account that you just reset the password on. So I'll put those in here. And so if you get this error, it means you just need to start running these one at a time. This organization customization can take a minute to run, so don't be alarmed if it's just hanging here. It just takes a few minutes to actually execute. Okay, after you've gotten the new command line here, you'll go to put it in that last line with the commandlets here with your admin name. And now that's successful, so we've set up application impersonation. Next here, we're going to remove this federation with GoDaddy. So again, let's take a look here before got it set up here this is a federated domain and this is the one we're going to make unfederated so the first thing you're going to do is do import dash module ms online we already did that so we're going to do connect msol service you can see that i tried to do the variable real quick and it doesn't like that that we used before so just go ahead and use, use the MSOL service connect function here. And then we're going to use the same admin credentials here that we've been using to sign in. So we'll go ahead and grab these. All right. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and say get MSOL domain. All right, and now we can see this here as well too in PowerShell. So what we're going to do here is to set MSOL domain authentication. And then we're going to say domain name is the t-365.info. And we're going to do authentication method or authentication, I should say, and then we're going to say managed. And that's done. So now I do this again, and you'll see that both are managed. Okay, so after that's done here, I've signed back in with that admin user, and I'm going to go ahead and go to admin. And you'll notice here that I'm able to access this page now. And this is the similar look and feel that is part of a normal tenant. So just saying that it is now not federated and I can perform my regular tasks here. 
as far as being able to reassign the licenses to users that I'm getting from CSP provider, things like that, and kind of move forward with whatever I'm doing here as far as the administration. After you've performed the defederation, if you're using solution one, it's imperative that you add a new provider and go under your products after you provision licensing and ensure that you see two line items for the actual licensing that's in this tenant. And from there, you'll go under settings and partner relationships and make sure that you've stripped GoDaddy of their delegated admin rights within this tenant. So if you click on them here, you'll be able to have roles assigned, which will be global admin and help desk admin. And you'll have a button here that says remove roles. And that is what I've already done in this tenant, but it's imperative that you do, or else like I mentioned earlier, you will run into issues where GoDaddy will come in and actually delete all the users still when you cancel the subscription. Canceling that kind of runs this script versus what you want to happen is just canceling the subscription and leaving it to expire worthless at the end of its term and canceling the billing event in the admin portal, but not actually um, giving them access to strip all the users from this platform. So if you do that, you'll still see this product in here until the end of the term and then it'll go to expired but they won't actually have access to do anything. So again, this is imperative that you get this done in order to perform the final steps of the solution one, which is defederating without migration. So make sure you do that here within the tenant and um, you'll see that you have all of the users uh, still listed here within this tenant as well too. If for some reason you don't perform this step, they'll rip the domain out so you would want to go back into domains and re-add it there and then you'd be able to recover users within this portal as well just simply by going in and going under deleted users here and restoring them or using PowerShell to do so and I'll have that in my guide that you can use. If you're using Solution 2 to defederate and migrate um, I'm not going to showcase these steps in here a lot of the defederation is what I want to show because that's the most complicated but essentially here, you know, there would be a few more steps that you would want to take after you've performed the migration itself into the new tenant, such as going in and uh, updating all the usernames and stripping the domain from this tenant as well too. So in this particular case, I've already ripped this out of here, but what you would want to do is simply go in and use some PowerShell scripts to bulk update the user UPNs and from there, you know, go in and actually remove the domain from the account. And that allows you to recreate in the destination and run some more bulk scripts to update everybody in there. And all of that is, is what I have in my guide. So the biggest thing though is kind of performing those defederation steps and, and making sure that you never have to call GoDaddy. So that's the main things that I want to showcase here in this particular video. If you guys do have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, please subscribe to the channel, like I mentioned earlier, if you do want to see content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks guys, have a great day.